sound. The Hindus tell us this is the shape of Om. This is the shape of the vowel A. Sand on the metal plate. Ah, uh, this is the shape it'll give you. And you'll see it's not a perfect circle. Some of, sometimes they're very erratic, very strange and weird shapes. So what we're looking at are just the representations of sound frequencies as they're coming out of the surface of planet Earth. That's what this is all about. This is why each one is completely unique. You've just seen the evidence for that. And I must tell you, last year on this tour in San Francisco, I was asked, how did they create these shapes? And my answer to that is, because I've been finding these long, elongated stones, they're like these, remember that the stones are, they're crystalline, that's a metamorphosized quartzite, so it's like a crystal. But it's because of the iron and aluminium, it's got sound properties, it's used for sound, not for light. So, they would put these elongated stones in a circle, they would put sand in the middle, and they would activate those stones in a circle by some sort of a sound frequency, activate them. And that would show them, just like you've just seen, the shape of the sound frequency in the middle as it manifests from the, the earth, right? Well, a week later, a lady by the name of Sandy Mack, who's the head of the Dowsing Association here in the USA, called me up. And she said, I've got to tell you this. Uh, I was doing a past life regression of a, a retired engineer from General Electric, and I took him into a past life in Atlantis, and I thought, let me take him into South Africa, into the gold mines. Bam, he was there. And she asked him, how did they build the stone circles? And he told her exactly what I've just told you. Except the difference was, they didn't use sand, they used ash. And I went, of course they used ash, I should have known that, stupid. <laughs> but it's, you know, and once again, you've got to ask yourself, from a scientific perspective, the statistical probability for this guy to come up with that information, and me, it's, there is no ratio that can define that. So we are telling you the truth. That's what's happening here. So these are the physical manifestation of the energy fields represented by sound frequencies on the surface of the planet Earth. What you're looking at is energetic plug points into planet Earth. And thereby, they're all connected by those channels that link them together so they can, sh they can share those energetic fields and the energy that they get out of the ground. Not only do they share them through the roads that they're all connected by, but you can see they also channel that energy into the terraces to help the grow growth of the crops that they were growing. There's a cymatic shape for Hans Jenny's photograph. There's a circle in the middle. There's the spider's web effect. All the, the terraces going out of it. Here you go. There's a circle. There are the terraces going out away from the side. All connected by these roads. It is so bloody obvious, isn't it? But how much energy could they create? And this is where it really blows your mind. To figure out how much energy they created, we got to take you to Japan in 1944. And what the Japanese called the death ray, which they borrowed from Nikola Tesla, they're going to smite the Allied army with it. But luckily for us, right, they couldn't because they were nuked. And um, the way they generated the energy in this death ray was with a thing called a magnetron, which is a high frequency, high energy generating device. And how does this work? You create a frequency in the middle, you amplify it millions of times over there, and then you shoot it out through the wires. Every microwave's got a tiny little magnetron in it. So, same thing, same principle, right? Well, it was actually an electrical engineer that sent me this as a suggestion once I started posting these on the website. And he said, these things look just like a magnetron. Well, can you imagine if a magnetron this size, based on the picture of that death ray, could smite an allied army, how much energy a magnetron 30 meters in diameter can generate? And this is why many of these are these weird flower shaped, because they actually are magnetrons. You can see these strange flower shapes, not because they were pretty, because they were actually the amplification devices. When I showed this to this one lady, psychic lady in Johannesburg, within two seconds, I can need your reaction. I showed her that photograph. She said to me, long before I knew this was all to do with energy, she said, oh my God, this is the device that caused the destruction of Atlantis. Just like this, bam. Now I understand what she meant. Because what I'm showing you here is what the Sumerian tablets refer to as the Earth Splitter. The energy fields use, they use this to generate the energy to create the, the tools to split the earth to get to the golden veins. 
What you're looking at is one large giant energy grid, all connected. And it's all lying below the soil. Only a fraction of them have been exposed in southern Africa. And now, while we can be so absolutely bloody sure about this, is because we measured this. We measured electromagnetic waves, sound frequencies, and their loudness in decibels, and then a heat signature. Now, very quickly, the, electromagne the electromagnetic waves we measure in horizontal and vertical fields. The sound frequency we measure uh, as, as a frequency in hertz, and its loudness in decibels. And then the heat signature we measure um, in degrees Celsius, and the maximum degrees it can measure is 80 degrees. This is a machine can measure up to 80 degrees, at which point it tells you you're standing on top of a geyser or a volcano. Okay, it's a maximum. Remember, it's 100 degrees Celsius is boiling water, 0 degrees Celsius is freezing water. All right, so 80 degrees is extremely hot, but it's actually an average of the temperature about 200 meters down. What's 80 degrees suggests you're standing on top of a volcano or something to that effect. So, inside the circle, this big circle, we measure, let's start with a small one. The heat signature around the outside is 5.5 degrees Celsius, anywhere outside. The moment you cross into that little circle, it shoots up to 29 degrees. 5.5 degrees, 29 degrees. What? There is no scientific explanation for this, why this should be happening. When you come into the big circle, it shoots up to about 33 degrees in the middle here. Then we measure the sound frequency inside these walls. Nothing outside, very little sound outside. Inside these walls, 14 and a half gigahertz. Now this is not, these are not the frequencies that you measure sound in. When you tell people you're measuring sound at gigahertz, they tell you, no, it can't be sound. Well it is, because it's telling us the decibels of that sound frequency at 72 decibels. And it's only inside these walls. And then the electromagnetic waves inside these, inside these walls, just on the inside, it creates like a weird dome effect, 480 megahertz volt direct current, that's what we measure, very little outside, probably about 20 or 40 megahertz volt ambient uh, electromagnetic outside, but like a dome shaped effect over this. And then the interesting thing is that this little circle, we measure about 240 megahertz volt electromagnetic waves, but it shoots straight out of the ground into the sky. So here it runs horizontally, there it runs vertically into the sky. Then we go up the mountain and we get even bigger surprises. This little concentric circle here tells me that it's got amplification properties and that's exactly what it does. Heat signature outside, about five and a half degrees. You climb over those walls, inside 58 degrees. Five and a half degrees, 58 degrees. People, this is spectacular information. It's just impossible for this to be happening. Okay. I, I send this to Nassim Haramein. He hasn't come back to me and I want him to explain to me what he thinks is going on here. I had a chat to him about this. He said, that sounds really interesting. Send me the details. And, uh, you know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, and then we measure uh, inside here, 33 and a half gigahertz sound frequencies at 105, 103 decibels. Remember that 110 dB, you start doing eardrum damage. 103 dB at 33 and a half gigahertz sound frequency coming out the middle here. This is insane. And then we measure the, the, the uh, megahertz volt inside that circle there. It runs again, it runs horizontally at about 580 megahertz volt creating like a dome-shaped effect over it. This is why I believe you lose satellite and, and uh, GPS contact when you go in there. There's another very interesting story we, we have, but I'm running out of time, so, about the Jeep ground penetrating radar we did at some of these sites. Uh, we did ground penetrating radar in, at this site here.